it's been good, you know, uh, just uh, learning a lot. Um, as you know, I think one of the things that we're probably going to do different is, is the pitching part of it, and, and that's an area that throughout my years I want to keep growing, keep learning, and uh, just to be around him, listening to his ideas, now with Andrew, and, <clears throat> you know, the, the, the philosophy is going to be a little bit different, uh, and uh, the structure is going to be different, and I'm, I'm very... Very eager to learn from them, so it should be fun. When you say that, do you mean like for individual games? How you guys I think everything, yeah. um, you know, from philosophy, how we're going to attack guys, uh, how we're going to recruit guys. Uh, I'm telling you, like the last 10 days, going through the process, showing, uh, you know, the free agents, you know, what we are all about in the pitching department, showing a few things that are probably different than in the past. It, it's been refreshing. It's been fun and. Uh, I know uh, the feedback we've been getting has been positive, and from my end, I, I've been in, impressed with uh, with the with the new stuff that we're talking about. Uh, how do you feel about this year contract situation? Kind of going into the year with just a year left. I'm very comfortable with it. You know, uh, I think at the end of the day, you know, uh, if Angelic is happy and the boys are happy and my daughter is happy, we're, we're fine. You know, I understand. How it works, I know. Um, you know, this is something we're going to discuss. We're going to talk with time. But I think right now, uh, from my end, not being selfish, I think the most important thing right now is to make this team better. Uh, you know, we're in the process now of trying to acquire guys, and <clears throat> there's talks about trades and all that stuff. So let's let's do that first. And uh, you know, whenever they they want to talk about it, we'll talk about it, and uh, we'll we'll see what happens. Credit projector. Like right now, um, obviously, <clears throat> there's the the swing guys, whatever you want to call it, right? With how uh, Wink, somebody that towards the end of the season, I view more as a as a reliever than as a starter. But I think with the information provided and the new group, there's a, a new new vision with him. I'm not saying he's going to be a starter, but it's a guy that he can you know go multiple innings, you know, with his stuff and, and the characteristics of his pitches against lefties and righties. So stretch everybody out. That's where they're working at. And then we'll see what happens in the upcoming weeks, month, whatever it is. Uh, if we add people, then we make adjustments. But as of now, all those kids are going to be stretched out uh, as starters. That The kid from Miami, you know, he didn't work out in Fort Myers, but he made sure to show up at the restaurant, uh, Casas. And I, ha I haven't seen a guy demolish a tomahawk steak the way he did that day. I mean, it was amazing. But it was him, it was Crawford, it was Reese, Connor. Uh, we had a good group. Um, we got like six or seven guys working out of JetBlue, a JetBlue led by uh, Chris Sell. So he's been good. Uh, I saw Rafi uh, not too long ago. I went to the Dominican Republic. Rafi was there. I miss Bayo, but uh, it's been good. Next week, we're going to go uh, Pete, Huddy, myself, Kiyoshi. We're going to go to the academy again. We're going to see Rafi, Valdi, Pablo, Bello, Abreu, probably Rafaela. Uh, Rafaela was in the group too in Fort Myers. So uh, there's been a lot of traveling, a lot of trying to connect, you know, and uh, hopefully it works. When at the end of the year, you, you were saying that you thought Rafaela probably needed a little, at least a little more development time and would be unlikely to make the team out of camp. Is that still your thought here, depending on what happens in the next month? Uh, yeah, I think, I mean, uh, where we at right now, uh, there's a chance he might, you know, uh, this guy is versatile enough and defensively we do believe he, he, he will impact center field, we know that, but he can do it a short. Uh, there's a chance that he might play in, in Curacao, there's a league there in Winnable, so he can play second base, we're still talking about it, but uh, I think versatility comes into play. Obviously, the, the, the offensive part of it, he needs work. He knows it. Uh, we need him to get stronger, too. But uh, as of right now, there's a chance that you know where we at and where we envision, there's a chance that he might make the team. Craig told us yesterday that you're looking to make an internal hire for third base coach and probably have a white fewer coach overall. Could you uh, talk to us about a little bit? Um, I think uh, versatility is very important. I think we're capable with the guys that we have. Uh, you know, Foxy have done the infield part of it. Ramon has done it. I've done it too. It's just a matter of, uh, you know, sit down as a group and uh, just breaking down and uh, go from there. Um, like I told you guys towards the end of the season, it's not only about challenging players, it's about challenging our group, you know, led by me. 
So that's something we've been talking about. It. Uh, you saw Huddy last year at third base, you know, and uh, he's had experience there. Andy has had experience with the Marlins at first base. Uh, Ramon will be in the bench, you know, he, he stays there as a bench coach. So we'll talk about it in the upcoming days, upcoming weeks, and uh, whatever formation you want to call it, we decide is going to be beneficial for the group. So you don't actually have a third base coach specifically at yet, or is that like kind of all, where's that sitting? I think, I think we have a pretty good idea, but uh, we have to talk to, to the people involved, and when we do that, then we'll announce it. Is Trevor doing that in field? It'll be in January, early January. Yeah, uh, there's a few guys that are going. I'll go there too. Uh, I think the Bucks are playing the Mavericks, so that's the only reason I'm going. Uh, but yeah, he, he's in a good spot. Um, healthy. Is, uh, as you know, he's very structured with his workouts, with his team that helps him out. And uh, it's going to be a good opportunity for some kids to go there, work with him. Casas will be there too. So uh, just trying to, to get everybody together in the same place and, um, you know, I mentioned that sometimes the word culture is overused in a sense. You know, I know there's a lot of people out there that probably they're like, this kid is not what he's saying. It's not right. But I think, uh, yeah, it's overused. And uh, we just want everybody together in the same place and work, you know, and, and keep getting better. And uh, as you know, uh, we finished last the last two years. So we just have to improve a lot. You said yesterday that you felt something to the effect of the way the game is moving. Uh, stories in for kind of a big hand. What do you mean by that? Um, he hits a ball at a ballpark. He can play elite defense. And he can run the bases. You know, he, you saw him last year whenever he got on. You know, it's, it's just the leads are elite. Uh, the decision making is elite. And when he's right, he can run into 30. We know that. You know, he's done it before. Just a matter of the consistency. Uh, you know, I give him a mulligan next, uh, last year because of the at-bats he missed, the elbow. We always talk about the throwing part. How about the swing part? You know, he's a top hand. So uh, there was a lot of adjustments that he had to make. He wasn't able to catch up with the fastball, and he knows it. So that's something he's been working, cleaning up some, some moves. But I think if he puts it all together, you know, power, speed, and defense, that's kind of like where the game is going to go, you know, especially defensive part of it. We were a lot better with Trevor Short. Um, I forgot who won the gold glove, but uh, with 40 or 50 more games, I mean, hands down, he, he was the best defender in, in the league in that position. So expect him to, to have a great offseason. So far, he's been good and uh, just go out there and, uh, you know, impact the game the right way. How was Chris when you talked to him? Good, good. He's in a good place. Uh, you know, he's actually, you know, going through his progressions, uh, throwing up to like 120, finishing on the mound, which... You know, uh, he hasn't done that in, in years, right? Uh, I remember last year, when it's going to be the first bullpen for Chris? I don't know, like in a few weeks, whatever. But now he's in a position that uh, physically he's right, mentally he's right. It's just a matter of keep going through his progression. Uh, you know, Dan DeLucia has been amazing with him down there. Uh, while the whole process of the pitching coach uh, was going on, uh, Devin Rose, Kevin Walker, and Dan, they, stand, they stayed you know, on top of it, and uh, we're in a good place because of those guys, and Chris is one of them. Given his history, how do you kind of approach him coming into the season? Well, I mean, the way he finished the season, it gives me hope that we're going to be okay, right? Uh, there were some good days and some, some grind days, you know, towards the end, but he wanted to post. He wanted to pitch. I think it was more... He kept saying it was to show the group that, uh, hey, I'm part of this, I, I want to do it, but I think it was more for him that, you know what, I can do it throwing 89, 90, right? And he finished strong, he threw the ball extremely well. Uh, I know we cannot do this, but take the Orioles out of the equation, right? And probably he had a two ERA and, and you know, like nine strikeouts per, per, per nine, you know? So um, uh, just take care of him as always, but I think he's way ahead, you know, compared to the last three or four years. I, I think it, it all depends where we at in the upcoming weeks or months. You know, uh, obviously last year we had one of the best, and uh, you know he's still available. He's out there, uh, and uh, you know we haven't closed the door with, with him. It's just a matter of uh, how we're gonna, you know, be uh, roster-wise, you know, for opening day, and uh, you know we can use it 
for one guy, you know, to, to dominate the way JT did and the way JD did it before, or we can go another route. So we'll see how it goes. You know, I think it's, uh, well, it's not early in the process, right? I mean, like, we're here, but uh, I think as far as, like, that market and the way things are moving right now, it feels like it's very early in the process because not much has happened. With Turner, how much? You know, With who? With Turner. Uh-huh. We've asked you, obviously, you know, over the course of the year and into the offseason of just what he brings outside of, you know, what he does on the field. How much, if he doesn't return, how irreplaceable is that? I mean, even if he returns, there's a lot of stuff that we have to do as a group, you know. Uh, like I said, the work culture, right? You know, we, we have to... One of the things that we're going to do in spring training is compete, you know, and uh, I'm telling you, like, you'll see it, you know. Uh, you might see a big group in the bowling alley, or you, know, you see a big group at Top Golf or in the escape rooms. You know, we're going to compete the whole time. I think that's something we haven't been great the last two years about it. You know, like, we've been close, right? Like, one game behind, you know, on the trading deadline or two games back, whatever, and all of a sudden we stop playing, in a sense. It's not that we quit, it's that we didn't play well. So you got to compete all the way throughout and uh, you know if he's here he's going to be part of that if he's not you know we still have to do it that way and that's something that uh, if we're going to pick a topic or a theme of a spring training it's going to be competition and that's something that uh, is going to be from the roster to the coaches to the front office to the organization we got we have to be better at competition and hopefully we can do it next year. Do you feel like you want to get your feet of some DH at bats next year no matter how it shakes out? Um, you know what uh, we, we have to wait and see. Um, I know people put in question his defense, but we do believe towards the end of the season he got used to it. The one thing that uh, from my end he needs to do better is decision making, you know, where to throw the ball at Fenway. Uh, I think there were too many throws that, you know, met first and second, and, you know, we threw, the, uh, met at first, ball off the wall, we threw third, it was second and third, and then, you know, they scored two runs, you know, and that's something that comes with experience, right? And uh, the other thing, I, I think I told you guys uh, towards the end, we're going to do a lot of stuff at the stadium at, uh, at JetBlue. We, we have to, you know, because we have to be better running the bases. We have to be better defensively. And we play 81 games in one of the, you know, most home field advantage stadiums in the big leagues. And we haven't done that in years. It's not the last two. I think in 21, we weren't great either. So. Uh, Hopefully, you know, uh, with, with what we're going to do in spring, he can, he can get better in the outfield. And, um, but we still have to wait and see where we're going to be in a few weeks. Alex, what type of advice would you give Joe Espada or have you given Joe Just be you, man. Just be you. Uh, I think that was the most important thing. Uh, Tito told me back in the day, uh, Tony, which I saw him today, by the way, he looks great. La Russa. Uh, just a little bit, you know, the hair. Uh, didn't get used to it, but... Uh, um, just be you. I think that's the most important thing. Uh, he he's in a in a perfect situation, right? Uh, he's settled in Houston. His family loves it, and uh, he knows the group since 2018. Uh, he got horses too, right? Uh, Bregman, Altuve, and Lance. They've been there since I don't know when, 2017 together, 16, right? So he has the leaders. Uh, one of the best DHs in the league. He got Verlander, so uh, he's in a good spot. You know, I wish him nothing but the best, and uh, he's prepared for it. What does it mean to you to have six Latino managers in Major League? It's great, you know, six out of 30, you know. Um, it, it's amazing, and uh, I know we talk about the C League rule and all that stuff. I always said that uh, when they see us as capable, uh, the, the numbers are going to go up. And uh, there's a lot of managers, there's a lot of coaches. Uh, I still believe the third base coach for Detroit is a good manager. He should be, but he's not going to get a job doing that. But uh, I'm very proud of all of them. Uh, they have earned, you know, the right to become big league managers. There's only 30 in the world, you know, and we got six Latinos, so which is great. Kiyoshi went over there. Masai went over there. So uh, he, he's doing well, uh, getting stronger. Uh, that's one of the goals that we wanted to. Uh, he started swinging, I, I want to say, like two weeks ago. So he's in a good spot. Alex, a lot of modern pitching seems to be maximizing every pitch, right? You don't want to, that's why you're you guys early going. Is there still a spot in today's game for that, like, back of the rotation, just innings in your guys? There's still value. Those aren't there. I mean, it's <clears throat> the reason we didn't make it to the playoffs last year, I think it's that. You know, like, the previous year it was back end, right? We struggled. Last year we were really good the last three. Whenever we had the lead in the sixth, we won games, but we weren't able to get to the to the fifth, 
and uh, over 162, <clears throat> it's impossible to, to make it to the playoffs if, if we don't get enough innings from, from your starters. In October, it doesn't matter. That's a different animal. You play two in a row, you got the off days. People don't care, right? But uh, over 162, you need guys to go deep into the game, and hopefully we can get those guys. When you look at first, uh, obviously you're probably at a right-handed bat. Do you feel like you still have to protect Tristan a little bit over there, or is it going to be? As far as, like, uh, certain lefties? I don't believe so. He played a lot towards the end, right, until he got hurt. Um, I think like 30, 40 games in a row. We, we, we push him to the limit. So uh, uh, he's, he's doing well. He's getting ready. Uh, I think the offseason, as far as his legs, is a lot different than, <clears throat> than last year. Last year he went to Lise and he was a little bit banged up. So he had to change his uh, routines in the offseason. Uh, I'm not going to say he's going to be as explosive as Duran, but that's something that he's going to be working on and hopefully it can translate on his defense. And that shoulder thing is? Of the past, yeah. He's actually he's in Boston, I think, uh, in the caravan, right? So he's going to see the trainers. He's going to start swinging. He's going to the Dominican next week with us. So he, he's doing well. Even if you are okay with him facing lefties, do you need somebody on the roster? <clears throat> I think I think you know there's a great opportunity for Bobby to to to, to be part of this. You know uh, he can play first, he can play third. Uh, you know he played the outfield towards the end of the season, and he's been able to hit lefties. You know, and in the situation we're in right now, I mean it makes sense for him. You know, if everything goes well and nothing changes, there's a good chance that he'll be that guy. As things stand right now, how do you see things at second base? Um, Valdi has been working hard, especially with his arm. He played a little bit there in, in, um, with Toros. Actually, Carlos was helping us out down there. Uh, Pablo played a little bit. Uh, he got a little bit banged up, kind of like sore oblique, so he stopped playing. He might play next week, but uh, those two are part of it. And David Hamilton, you know, um, he, he's doing well. He's going to be in Dallas with us in, in, in January. He's a guy that... Just like Trevor, in a sense, not the power part of it, but the, the speed is elite. He's a good defender. I know he struggled defensively uh, last year, but I mean, when you're a kid and you're in the big leagues and you want to impress everybody, the game is going to speed up on you. And uh, he's a better defender than what we saw last year. The, uh, the AL East has always been a challenging position. The West, too. Very difficult. We 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 seen it since uh, I got here. Um, you know, um, Baltimore. You know, um, for everything they've done as far as like position players, their pitching is is it's really good. You know, it started towards the end of 21, and they've done an amazing job. You know, putting structure and uh, and maximizing their talent. You know, and uh, there's some good players in the minor league system that we will see next year. So they're really good. Um, you know. I called Booney yesterday, FaceTimed him, and, and he gave me this kind of like smile, kind of like look, you know, he was very happy. So something big might happen over there. Uh, Toronto, there's a lot of talks about them. It's, it's the toughest division in baseball. And right now, we haven't been up to par with the division the last few years. What more do you want to see out of Duran? Obviously, he's coming up on a pretty good year, but what else can he do to kind of solidify his role? Um, keep growing as a base runner. Uh, I, I do believe he went from being okay because he was a fast guy to become a base stealer. I think he can be more aggressive in that sense. Uh, he was very efficient last year, but take chances and uh, defensively keep getting better. I think decision making is the other one. You know, he has a good arm. You know, he's not a bad one, but he makes. You know, uh, he, he needs to make better decisions defensively. But offensively, he did well against lefties. He was able to hang in there, hit the ball the other way. Uh, hit the ball the other way against righties. Uh, just got to keep him healthy. One more for Alex. And you mentioned decision making with a couple guys. How do you sort of approach that? Uh, I think just yeah. kind of like challenge him. That probably different drills using the minor leaguers, kind of like in, in certain situations, uh, in infield practice and all of that, putting pressure on them. Uh, one of the things that uh, we noticed last year. You know the game is getting faster. It's getting—I mean, it's better athletes, and obviously with the pitch clock, and you know you don't have too much time to think. You know, and it's not only on the mound and behind the plate. As a defender, you have to recognize all this stuff. So uh, we'll do a, a little bit, uh, a few things differently in spring training. Challenge them more, come on more game-like situations, and hopefully we can be better.